You forgot about inflation. Oh. Mm -hmm. They were talking about $70,000 for a brand new pickup truck. I remember, I mean, I I bought this building for $25,000. I mean, can you imagine how many of these kind of buildings I could buy with $70,000? But you know what? If you have the money, it's okay. But the thing is, they're borrowing that money. You can't imagine how much interest they're paying. They're paying more than probably twice as much for that vehicle. So they're paying $140,000 by the time they get, if they get it paid off. But they're trying to gain the, the, the prestige of having a brand new shiny pickup truck. But you know what happens the moment you drive off that parking lot? Huh? But you're over there polishing it, making sure nobody scratches it. And somebody comes and says, can you help me move? Oh, I, I just bought it. <laughs> no. You know, that's why I like having a, a truck that has a whole bunch of hail damage. You know, if I scratch it up, well, who cares, right? It's just cosmetic. But the thing is that if you have your mindset on the things of this earth and getting the nice cars, the nice house, all the luxury of the, what this world has to offer, guess what? They say there's no curses with a trailer hitch. How much of that you know, take with you? Job says, naked I came into the world, naked I will leave. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Is that where you are? Not caring for this world, but caring for the other world and those that you will take with you to be there forever. <coughs> for the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Payday. How many of you enjoy payday or if you were working and, and got a paycheck? How many of you was looking forward to the payday? Huh? Why? Because you get rewarded for the labor that you put in, right? But you know, this kind of payday for some people is not going to be the day that you want. Because what you reap, you will sow. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now wait a minute. Has Jesus come back yet? See, there's another one over there. It's kind of, you know, mind-boggling. You know? What does he mean by that? Well, you know, he hasn't been glorified yet. He hasn't died yet. He hasn't risen yet. But, you know, Jesus did come back in his glory. And he says, you know, put your hands in my whole hand, you know, holes in my hand and, 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 and put your hand in my side and my feet. You know, look, I did it for you. And there's that song, song that says the only scar in heaven is going to be the ones that hold you now. Jesus has come in all his glory and his disciples beheld him and gave him glory for who he was. And then in Ephesians 6, one of my favorite passages that talks about spiritual <clears throat> finance. Be strong in the Lord in the strength of his might. You see, so many of you are trying to fight the battle on your own, on your own terms. And you're going to lose. In his might, put on some of the armor of God. But what does whole mean? All. And what does all mean? All. <laughs> put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil. In the heavenly places. Do you believe that there's evil here today? Yeah. It's getting worse. And the scripture tells us it's going to get worse. We're hoping for better, but you know, ultimately it's going to get really bad. Are you ready for that? And are you doing what you can to 
allow the gospel of Jesus Christ to permeate our community so that some people won't have to experience eternal rights. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all, stand firm. Stand your ground. You know, when the enemy's attacking, right? And, and you're over there and there's a uh, thousands of soldiers out there and there's only five of you. You know, you want to wave the white flag. <laughs> no, he said, stand firm, stand your ground and fight. Stand therefore, having fastened the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and, and as the shoes for your feet and having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. It's so easy that when we're going through these tough times to blame God for your hardships that is happening. How I many of you have ever blamed God, huh? But are you going to believe in God only when He does good to you? Or are you going to understand that God has it under control and that you will trust Him no matter what and you're going to have faith in Him? So the shield of faith is which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation. You know, if you don't have salvation, and you can all that battling is not going to be for anything because you're not going to be saved. <laughs> you might as well die now, right? You're not going to take up the salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You ever heard of a soldier going into battle without their weapon? What's going to happen to them? Praying once a day. Praying sometimes in the spirit. At all times. What does at all times mean? All the time. Pray with the, the Holy Spirit that lives within, within you. And sometimes you don't even understand what you're praying about. But you know what? The Spirit helps us. With the words that we mutter to God, and, and somehow God understands what we're praying about. Do you believe that? With all prayer and supplication, to that end, keep alert. With all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me. That words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. For which I am ambassador in chains. You think you have it bad. I mean, I'm, I'm reading about all these people that are being prosecuted and spending time in jail. Calling insurrectionists because of January 6th. A grandmother went to pray there. And she's been thrown into jail. Chained. Body chains. And what are they doing? They're letting the criminals go. People that have murdered, they let them go. What happened to our society? Something's got to change. And where is it going to start changing? It's got to start from us. You can't expect the non-Christians to change. No, we have to change and be the lights of the world. And people will look at us and say, I oh, want what you got. <clears throat> which I am ambassador in chains that I may be declared boldly as I ought to speak. <clears throat> in Romans 8 it says, what then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, if God is on my side, who cares who the enemy is? No. Right? God's got it. So why don't you want to stay on the winner's side? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with us, graciously give us all things? Now you might misinterpret that and say, well, God doesn't give me all the things I want. What is he talking about here? He is going to give you and equip you according to your calling to give you what you need to proclaim his name. 
You see, we all have gifts that he has given us. The question is, are you going to use that for his glory? Or are you going to use those gifts for Satan? There's no in-between. As you've been using it for God, you're using it for Satan. I mean, there's a lot of good musicians out there that, well, I don't know if you call it good. I call it honest, but some people consider it. I mean, you know, how many of you, um, there's people that are driving down the street and you hear this, boom, 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 boom. They go, if I can hear it out here, <laughs> they're going to be deaf by the time they get to my age. <laughs> But there's artists that, if they had only given that talent to the Lord, they'd be so much far away ahead of themselves. Who will bring any charge against those who have God as chosen? It is God who is just. You know, we expect our justice system to be just. <laughs> and yet the justice system today in America is just terrible. Who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that. Who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all in all. We are consider sheep to be slaughtered. Can you see the sheep walking to the slaughtering house? We don't know what's happening. We don't know when we're going to face our last prayer. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Him, Convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, the depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us 